Hi there and thanks for tuning in for another Design in Motion video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the various ways to export your SOLIDWORKS models and create good quality BIM data. First of all, thank you to Methvin here in New Zealand for supplying this excellent model of one of their faucets. We use this as an example of extracting model and metadata from SOLIDWORKS to, and publishing it ready for BIM modeling products such as uh, Revit or Archicad. Now essentially when you're creating a BIM model you want to convey the intent, the design intent of the product with as little detail as possible because if you can imagine if um, an architect wants to use this type of faucet throughout a large building then there's going to be a large number of instances. So you really want to simplify the model and keep the file size down while making sure that all of the data that they need uh, to add value to placing this model in their um, environment is there for them. So. This particular model has a reasonable amount of um, detail internally. Now it's already been stripped down of a lot of IP but as you can see there's components here that we don't need. We're never going to see them and it's just adding um, size to the model. So the first stage of this tutorial is going to be is going to cover the ways to strip all of that um, model data out of the model quickly. Ultimately, all we're interested in here are the external components. So my favorite method here, just to clear things up in my mind, is to create a, um, an external components folder and move all of the external components into it. So we've got this handle on the top. We'll move that in there. The mounting kit, I'm going to want that whole thing in there as well. Um, and we can hide that now and we can see that we're only left with um, internal components. I actually want to add this nozzle as well and include that in there. Then the rest of them we can then move into an internal component um, folder. Add to folder, internal component. And then suppress the folder and all of its contents. Now we're in a position where I've stripped out a lot of the detail that the defeaturing and simplification tools are going to need to look at. So now it can focus on just to speed things up, you know. To simplify this model here, we, there's a whole bunch of fillets and chamfers that we just don't need anymore. And there's a pretty neat tool inside SolidWorks called Simplify. You can choose which features you want to remove and the factor, it's kind of like the search tolerance you want uh, SolidWorks to use to find them. Once it has found all of those features, you can choose to include or exclude um, things on a feature-by-feature uh, -feature basis, but here I'm perfectly happy with suppressing all of those features, and I don't need to create any configurations, but you could do that if you wanted to uh, maintain or be able to switch easily between a high and a low detail version of the model. Now you can see it's going through and it's stripping out all of that detail and leaving hard edges, which is perfectly okay and just what we need, actually. For, um, for BIM models. So now that's done we can see there's been a few errors that have uh, ended up popping up and to be honest I don't need these here so for the sake of this exercise I'm just going to go through and suppress those. Okay so now we've got an error free model to work with and we've got everything I need all geometry wise it's as simple as it can be but it's still full of all these cavities so now we need to move on and figure out a way to to fill all of that and reduce the number of faces to, essentially so again SOLIDWORKS has a pretty cool tool for that it's called the defeature tool and it's got a number of stages to it now we can um, there aren't any internal components left but you can actually remove them using this um, option here the next stage is going to offer me the opportunity to um, create groups and allow motion between them. So if I wanted to, I could um, create the top, the handle as a group and the body as a group so that I could, could move the handle if I wanted to, but I'm not going to this time. And I can actually choose to keep explicitly keep individual features here if I want. But I'm going to skip through to the last stage and after it's gone through and tried its best to remove as many of the features as possible, it's not actually going to capture all of them and we'll use this section tool here to see, see what I mean. 
So we can see with this little preview on the right hand side that it's done a pretty good job of filling all this section of the model up, but it hasn't done anything with the, the handle at the top here. So now I can start removing some of these features. As I select a face, it asks me whether I want to select the face, the feature, body or component. So I'm going to select the feature here and you can see it confirming the selections it's made in, in this selection dialog here. A nice new feature in 2016 which has really helped is being able to expand this um, little pane here. Um, and so now we can carry on selecting features and making sure they all get removed. Now, that, so that's one side done. So we just want to make sure that we've captured everything we need. So we'll flip over and select any faces that are required on the opposite side of the handle as well. Because as it turns out, this was modeled um, with a mirror. So I, I needed to come in and select that to make sure it fully removed everything. Now, it would be nice to remove the, this additional face down here. But I know from practicing this beforehand that that doesn't actually... Um, improve the situation at all and this is going to be left behind so we'll click through to the next stage and you'll see that in the finished version at this point you can then choose to save the model as a separate file or and link it to the original if you want which is a good idea if you want to maintain associativity so I've actually got already got a, um, a file that I've prepared earlier so I'm just going to open that one up because I want to show you how to um, fill up the remaining um, section of that model. If I move this at uh, the history um, bar up to the top, you'll see that when I section the model, there's still this void that's been left in the bottom here. So we need to deal with that. I've come in and added this point in here in the center of the space as a connection point to use later on in the um, BIM, BIM model. To start filling up that void, I've extruded up from a sketch profile of that edge. Then I've copied the um, the whole body of the faucet, and then did a I've done a um, combine subtract to leave behind a, a lump in the middle here, and then I've done a combine add. So that's just filled up. I've created a um, a lump the same shape as the void and then added it back into the body. Now at this point here, when I section it again, I can see that that void has now been filled. Now there's a couple other details I want to tidy up. So just to keep them on, just to get rid of some of the additional geometry. So there was quite a bit of complexity in these clamps here that I really didn't need. So I've removed those and then I've got rid of some of these little faces that have been left up, um, left behind up here. So now I've ended up with quite a clean model that I can then export into various different formats. So this video has been got quite long. So in the second video, I'm going to go through and talk about the different ways of exporting um, the data out of this simplified model ready for use in either Revit or Archicad or any other um, product along those lines. I hope you found this useful and uh, thanks for tuning in. Take care guys. Bye.